One of the original Game Boy's stronger genres was that of the shoot'em up. Whether the vertical blasters of Solar Striker, Xenon 2, or Chikyu Kaho Ganzas, or the side scrolling ones of Gradius, Sagaya, or R Type, the first one anyway, it's a kind of uncommon example of a genre with much more good than bad. Being one of my favourites too, especially on retro consoles, I'm definitely feeling the urge to indiscriminately murderize some aliens. The earliest one to come out on Game Boy Advance was the first Iridian game, which proudly displayed the moniker 3D as part of its title, and well, yeah, it actually sort of is. In a way, kinda. It had a sequel a couple of years later that didn't make such a bold claim, and from what I understand, it actually benefited from not putting as much emphasis on what it does graphically. When I say Iridian 3D is kind of three-dimensional, it's almost as if the whole thing just produces the illusion without actually being so. It's certainly one of the more impressive early titles from a graphical perspective, but as to whether that contributes to making a good game, or in fact gets in the way of it, I'm still not completely convinced. Through the seven stages, you're piloting your spacecraft down these ever-advancing environments, with enemies and obstructions coming at you out of the screen. You can't move forwards or back as such, but are kind of locked into your plane and move all over the screen, shooting into it in a sort of cylindrical way. It's got a bit of a Star Fox feel to it, if a bit more limited than that. Each stage throws three, maybe four different types of enemies at you, some of which also shoot. It can be tricky to visualize where stuff is in relation to your craft, and while the projectiles do have that lurid pink thing going on, made famous by bullet hell shooters like Donpachi and Dodonpachi, what games they are, by the way, they can sometimes be incredibly difficult to see. This isn't because of the scenery, because while it is very impressive to look at, it's often geared towards being on the outside of the screen rather than the middle, or otherwise just doesn't get in the way. The issue is one of perspective, it can be really hard to gauge where to aim at first. The enemies take great advantage of the GBA's rather impressive scaling abilities, with everything starting small in the background and gradually growing larger as it gets closer. It's quite a striking effect. Environments power along, changing angular perspective as you move, not just moving towards you. Having said all that, there's not really any major feeling of speed at any point, which may or may not be a good thing. Enemies typically come at you in set patterns, usually in several waves. The difficult the difficulty mostly comes from having to dodge them, not easy with such an unusual combination of positions and controls, and you'll typically lose more health by crashing than getting shot. This is particularly a problem with the occasional kamikaze enemies, these move much more quickly and don't seem to scale as accurately, which can be frustrating. Every now and then you'll see four stationary targets along the walls of a tunnel in a cardinal direction formation. Make sure you destroy all of these before you get to them, because they're harboring a force field that does a ton of damage if you fly through it. Power -ups can be obtained by collecting these red, green, pink, or later on gold tokens, which give you slightly different weapons, and then power them up. There's sadly not much variation in the weaponry, and you can't power them up too much, something that was certainly rectified in the sequel. At the end of each stage is a boss fight. These are almost like separate levels altogether, and might see you rotating around a central target rather than flying towards one. Well, you're actually still stationary. Like in the levels, it's the illusion of the environments and foreign objects that make it seem like you're moving. There'll also be objects and projectiles rotating around, coming towards you, avoiding which is the real challenge here. You'll have to focus your fire on specific target points while dodging around stuff. It's quite tricky to split your focus unless you're used to it. Getting through the stages without losing a life is quite doable, but be prepared to wipe out several times at the boss fights. It's like any shmup in that respect, you need to figure out the patterns. It's not just tunnels, like in the garbage chute of the first stage, you'll soon be flying across the Pacific Ocean, uh, above the clouds, in the night sky, in space, and it all looks ridiculously good. The music really works too. Composer Manfred Linsner definitely took some cues from his countryman Chris Hurlsbeck's Turrican soundtracks here. The sound design is pretty effective too. This is, by a mile, the most stunning Game Boy Advance game to look at that I've seen so far. The graphics you see in the backgrounds especially look like something you'd find on the Nintendo DS, but this was practically a GBA launch title. I'd love to know how it was achieved. Some sort of mathematical wizardry, I guess. There are loads of little visual frills too, such as the third stage where the night time gradually gives way to dawn as you're fighting, even the way your ship points in a slightly different direction depending on where you are on the screen. But look, a pretty package
Bridge isn't everything. It's the Final Fantasy XV thing, right? In gaming, it's simply not enough to look and sound amazing. It doesn't fly today, and it didn't back in 2001. It's such a shame here that once the initial wow factor wears off, you're left with a very average shoot-em-up. It's not one that'll get the adrenaline coursing, that's for sure. Graphical mastery is one thing, but don't make the follow-through so bland. Developers Shinen are a small German outfit who've been around since 1999, quietly plugging away with some smaller titles, most recently the adorable adventure The Tourist, and this cute little penguin-based puzzler called The Punchrin. They were most productive probably on the DS, but realistically never did anything quite as renowned as this pair of games, which, if you're keen to check them out, have actually been re-released on Steam not all that long ago. You can get both of them for less than $20. I already know that the second one is quite a bit better to play, but that shouldn't deter you from at least trying this one first, even if just to check out the graphics. 